We are going to be feeding all of my exotic animals. What do you want to eat? You want some food? Hello. These guys are just absolutely chowing down. Oh, he's going, ooh, look at that. This guy right here just absolutely nailed the pellets. Oh yeah, open wide for that strawberry. One, two, whoa! What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope all of you are having just an absolutely amazing day. Now before we hop into today's video, I just wanna say thank you guys so much for one million subscribers. For me, it is absolutely insane to think that in a year and a half, I have now broke one million subscribers. All of you guys supporting me has been just absolutely amazing. Without all of your guys' support, none of this would be possible. I'm so thankful for all of your guys' support, and I'm so glad I'm able to bring you all on my amazing journey of the new zoo. But for today's video, guys, we are going to be feeding all of my exotic animals. We're going to be feeding the lemur. We're going to be feeding parrots. We're going to be feeding turtles, tortoises, and iguanas. If you guys want to see exotic animals get fed, well, you are in the right place. And we're going to start with my parrots right here. We've got the food ready. We've got some stuff ready to go. And we've got some delicious stuff right here. So we got two different parrot bowls right here. This one right here is actually for this big guy right here. As you guys know, um, I had to actually move the parrots around because the other rescued parrot that my sister rescued was getting bullied. He was getting beaten up, so we had to separate them. But we've got our food right here. We've got all kinds of delicious stuff. We've got some pellets, sweet potato, broccoli, some fresh papaya that was grown here. And we're just going to open on up right now. We've got Mr. McCall right here. This guy is not very nice. Come on, up, 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 up. And what do you want to eat? You want some food? Hello. Hello. So guys, this McCall was given to me by my parents' friend. This is a, he's kind of nice. He's kind of mean though. He tries to bite, but look at that. He goes right for that pellet right there. Now when feeding these macaws, you know, you want about 60, 70% of their diet to be pellets and the rest you want to be about vegetables and fruit, but you always want more vegetables and fruit. Do you want to be my friend? You uh -huh. want to be my friend? No, no. Hello, hello, hello. All right, this little guy has been fed right now. We're just going to lock the enclosure, and of course, we've got to put our padlocks on. we got to make sure everyone is staying nice and secure. Okay, there we go. We got it completely shut. we got to pull our key out. You enjoy your meal right there, and now we've got to go feed the other macaw. The other macaw is in a smaller enclosure for the time being until we convert and get the other enclosure ready to go. The big circular tiki hut. So we got his food, and we're going to head over and feed him now. Hello there, pretty bud. So this is a very scared macaw this one was found in someone's backyard ah! oh yeah hi hi hello 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 so we're just gonna take this we're gonna close this on up we don't want any escaped macaws he's got his wings clipped now we've got the food right here the food is in place we're gonna slide it on in and come on get some food get some food no okay ah! Well, that macaw right there wanted absolutely nothing to do with me. As I walk away, she's now going to the food to eat. Now that we fed our two rescue macaws, well, we're gonna head inside of the reptile room right now. I've got some Missouri diet ready, and we're gonna feed all of the raised up baby turtles, tortoises, and iguanas. We've got our Missouri diet ready to go for all of the reptiles here in the reptile room. The first guys we're gonna be feeding as normal is the radiated tortoises. We've got some gorgeous radiated tortoises right here. Now to feed them, we're literally just gonna to take some Missouri diet right here. Now this Missouri tortoise diet has all of the necessary nutrition for these little guys to grow into strong, healthy tortoises. Look at this guys, the little baby radiateds are already going for the Missouri right there. The one is already chowing down. Oh my gosh guys, look at this. All the baby tortoises that we just gave Missouri are literally come. The red foot tortoises are like the most ferocious eaters of all the tortoises that I have here. These guys are just absolutely chowing down. They're absolutely loving their Missouri diet. You can see we've got redfoots and sulcatas in here, but we gave them a nice little mountain so that they can eat as much as they want. These little guys are just ferocious eaters. I mean, how adorable are those tiny little baby tortoises that are in there? Now, if you actually want your very own pet tortoise, well, if you go right down below to jacobfetter.com, I've got some redfoots and sulcata tortoises available. These same babies that you see right in here are the same exact ones that are up on the website. And you guys will be able to get yourself your very own pet tortoise. We've got another big handful of Missouri for the Burmese star tortoises. Now, I love the Missouri product. I give it about once a week to all the animals, but we've got the Burmese star tortoises inside for the winter. We just gave them one scoop, and we're gonna give them one more good scoop right there of the Missouri diet. Now, the Burmese star tortoises that you guys see right here, these are critically endangered tortoises from Burma, India. And these guys are doing incredibly well breeding here in captivity. And now that the tortoises and the baby lizards inside of the reptile room got fed, it is time to feed the gorgeous Australian snake necks right here. Just take a look at him. He is ready for food. He's looking. 
He's searching, they are both ready. So we've got our Missouri pellets right here. I feed Missouri turtle pellets to them, so we're just literally gonna take these pellets just like this, and we're just gonna drop them on in just like that. One, two, oh, he's going, ooh, look at that. This guy right here just absolutely nailed the pellets. Look at him, oh my gosh. These turtles right here are just absolutely nailing the pellets. They're doing an incredible job at it. They're so curious, and I just absolutely love watching these turtles right here. These guys are absolutely enjoying their meal. I mean, I could literally sit here and watch these turtles eat all day. I mean, these are some of the coolest turtles that I think anyone can own. And now that we've fed our turtles, the last thing to feed inside of here is the snakes. I've got some rats thawing out outside, so we're gonna head over there now and see if they're done thawing. One minute, 37 seconds later. All right, we've got the rats in here. We're okay, we gotta turn that off now. And now we're gonna reach our hands in, we're gonna feel, and this rat feels, uh, it feels like it has a little more to go. It doesn't feel totally thawed out yet. It's still a little cold on the inside, but let me reach around for these little guys. All right, these little guys right here feel nice and good. These are the little mice that we're gonna be feeding out, so we're gonna turn our well water back on. While the other rat continues to thaw, we are going to feed the small baby boas these mice. Oh, look at that, we have some hungry boas in here here. We're going to start with one of my wild caught deering boas. You guys saw me feed them an iguana. I haven't had any iguana since, but this guy is ready to eat. Boas are very ferocious eaters, and they have a great feeding response. Look at this guy right here. He's ready for some food. So we're just going to bring this mouse on over right here, and we're just going to have him one, two, whoa, hoo -hoo, look at that. All right, now that he grabbed that one, we're just going to lift him on up. He has had his mouse right there. Look at that. So I prefer to feed all frozen thawed mice because when you feed frozen thawed, you really don't have to worry about the snake getting bit. When you feed live, if the snake doesn't grab the mouse right, there's a good chance the snake could get bit and I just, I want to avoid that altogether. And that is why I feed frozen thawed. So we have snake number one done. Now we're going to go to the bottom rack right now. This little guy right here is just a lot more calm. This one is just absolutely gorgeous. And you know why they call them red tail boas? Obviously because they have a gorgeous red tail. Look at this coral red, beautiful tail right there. I mean, this is one of the prettiest red tail boas that I have caught in the wild. I mean, this one is just an absolute stunner and it looks like he is ready for some food. So we're gonna take another mouse right now. I've got the mouse right here. And we're just gonna take this mouse right here in one, two, three. Ooh, look at that. What a beast. This is my big red tail boa that I've had since it was a hatchling. She's coming. I can see her. She wants this rat. Oh my gosh, that was. <laughs> Did you guys see that right there? Now that we have pretty much the entire reptile room, not pretty much, we have the entire reptile room fed, well, it's time to head outside and we're gonna feed the rest of the animals here on the property, which are the big iguanas and the tortoises. Now that all the reptile room animals and the parrots have been fed, well, it's time to feed the outdoor lizards and tortoises. We've got our bucket of lettuce right here and Mr. Rico is here, he's ready for some lettuce. Here you go, bud. We're just gonna toss a little bit of lettuce in there for Mr. Rico. Rico's my big Cuban rock iguana right here aren't you a good boy yes you are you want a piece of lettuce here Rico have a piece have some have a bite do you want a bite no Rico and his girlfriend have got their food right here we're just gonna close this on up we want to make sure they're nice and secure we've got more lettuce here and we're gonna head to the Lewis eye hybrids we're gonna open on up right now we're just gonna open up now this female right there is on breeding loan from me from a buddy of mine so we're just gonna toss some food her way we're just literally gonna toss handfuls and handfuls of lettuce for these lizards and we've got a cherry head here hey hey have a bite right here hey you want a bite you want a bite have some Zeno here have a bite Zeno that's right Zeno boy that is right you enjoy your lettuce right there now Zeno's not colored out right now it's actually a little bit cool out it's actually 75 for like the first time in Miami this this winter so he's not colored out right now he's actually darkened up in color now the reason why these animals darken up in color when it's cooler out is so they can absorb the Sun more the darker the color the more Sun the more heat they're going to absorb and here she is my prettiest animal here in my opinion this is my albino iguana I've had her since she was about five inches long and we're just gonna place some green leaf lettuce right down there for her she's a real sweet girl she's still pretty young and the iguana ban got overturned so that's really good but they're trying to ban these iguanas again you can see she's just a sweet girl and it really is a shame that they would want to you know ban such amazing animals why are you trying to bite me why are you getting annoyed she's a hungry girl she sees her food down there and she's gonna head there now 
We've got some gorgeous cherry head tortoises and we're just gonna take a nice thing like that of lettuce We're just gonna throw some in there and then for the red foot tortoises And we're literally just gonna dump an entire bucket of lettuce in here for the red foots We've got a nice spread and as you can see these guys are already hurting in these guys are ready to have some delicious lettuce here You want a bite have a bite come on take a bite here you want some here? Oh Yeah that is some delicious stuff right there. Now these redfoots that you see right here are actually the parents to the babies that I have available. You guys get to see their parents. You guys get to be a part of the family when you get one. They're chowing, they're munching, and now that the redfoot tortoises got their meal, I'm gonna take a quick little break. I'm gonna go head in, eat some lunch, and then we're going to feed the Galapagos tortoises. Oh my gosh, look here at the Galapagos tortoise paddock. This place is a total paradise, a total dream for the Galapagos tortoises. This right here is my youngest Galapagos tortoise, and she is on the way because she sees some of these delicious bell peppers. You know, with Galapagos tortoises, since these guys are a grassland tortoise, you really don't want to feed a whole lot of fruit. You want to feed more vegetables. You want about 90% of their diet to be weeds, grasses, and hay. So we only give produce like this about once a week. We're going to drop that red pepper in. That's for that big girl right there. And we're just going to leave that pepper there. We're going to head on in right now. This is an absolute dream come true to be able to have a massive paddock for my Galapagos tortoises. You can see they've got endless weeds. She could almost get lost inside these weeds. Hi there, girl. Now, I've had this girl since she was the size of a strawberry. For those that knew the channel, I'll put a picture up right now on the screen. You can see how big she was when I got her. And, oh, yeah, look at that right there. She has incredible chomping power. You can see with just ease, she was able able to just eat some of this bell pepper. These are the world's largest tortoises and they are a critically endangered species. So one day I hope to actually breed these guys here at the zoo and then we can help put more of these on the planet. Now we have two different bloodlines here. Now the reason why you want to have two different bloodlines is you don't want to inbreed these reptiles. By having different bloodlines you can have genetic diversity and without genetic diversity these animals would go extinct in the wild. That's why we need that genetic diversity and we have the big girl right here. I actually got this big girl from ZWF Miami Zoological wildlife but this was actually bred by one of the only Galapagos tortoise breeders in the country oh my gosh guys there's a tick on her neck there's a tick right there now guys I'm constantly looking for ticks but these ticks kind of appear out of nowhere and we're just gonna kind of distract her right there we're gonna try to distract her with that bell pepper and while she's distracted I'm gonna try to reach in there and get that tick guys oh my gosh I was coming to feed my tortoises but now this has just become a tick mission oh she's a little bit spooked She's got a great appetite. She is a ferocious eater. And this is good enrichment by moving the food around. Making her work for the food is good for her mind. It's good exercise for her legs. And we're just gonna put that pepper right there. You've earned it, girl. Go get that pepper right there. Now the goal for inside of here is, this is not gonna be their permanent home. This will be their home for probably the next five to 10 years. Oh my gosh. I just stepped in water. I just got my shoes soaked. I'm gonna be adding some hills, maybe one right there and one right there. The reason being is these tortoises live on the islands of Galapagos and they need those hills so they can have good exercise. They can develop strong bones and a strong, healthy body. Without those hills, a lot of these tortoises, they don't develop very well and they always have kind of a hobble in their walk and that is what we don't want. So we wanna give them the perfect habitat that we can build for them here in captivity. One hour later. What is up guys? I just got over here to my parents' house. Now Rufus, the lemur is still living here. My mom and my sister and my dad have been taking very, very good care of him. And once the enclosures are done, which starting this week, probably around Wednesday, the first enclosure is going to be done. Then we're going to get to bring Rufus over. But in the meantime, he's been here hanging out with them. And that means that they have got to feed him. So I came over here to give my little son some lunch. So this right here is our monkey biscuits. And then we have all kinds of good stuff. We got some good fruits and vegetables. Now I get pretty much all the fruit donated by Whole Foods. So shout out to Whole Foods. Thank you guys for the donations. But what we have here today is Rufus's little lunch. So we got some monkey biscuits. These biscuits right here have all the necessary nutrition. In order to grow a strong, healthy lemur, anything that we may miss out in the main diet of fruits and vegetables will be covered by these delicious biscuits that we have right here. I mean, they're actually quite good. I'm gonna try one myself. It's honestly not bad. 
The biscuits really don't taste all that bad, but we have our biscuits ready, so it's time to add our fruit and vegetable mix into his bowl right now. We've got our mix right here. We got all kinds of goodies in here. We're just gonna take a nice little handful, just like this, and we're just gonna sprinkle this handful. Now in here we got some strawberries, mangoes, we've got some melon, we've got some apples. We wanna make sure we get some apples and blueberries in there. We wanna get some zucchini, and we're just gonna go through, ah, there they are. There's a couple blueberries in here. You know, everything's kind of mixed around. So we've got right here a pretty well-balanced looking meal right here. We just wanna get just a little more fruit, maybe another strawberry. We gotta put our sweet potato back in. We want them to have just a little more fruit than vegetables, cause you know, these guys prefer to have the fruit over the vegetables, but you want them to kind of have pretty much a healthy balance between the two. So now that we've got his nice little bowl prepared right here, we're gonna place his bowl right over here and we're gonna go to his enclosure, get him out and feed him his lunch. We're back, I've got my son Rufus. Rufus is a hungry lemur right now. He is trying everything in his power to get to the food and we're just gonna have Rufus hop on down. Rufus, what do you want, boy? What do you want, man? What do you want, mister? Rufus is picking what he wants. What Rufus is searching, he's picking, and of course he's gonna go for, what'd you take? You took a blueberry? That is some delicious stuff. For those of you that don't know, Rufus is my black and white rough lemur, and look at this. I mean, we give him literally the best meal. We got strawberries, mango, kiwi, biscuits, vegetables. We got all the good stuff right here. How's my little son? How's my boy doing? You're getting to be so big. What do we wanna explore? Oh my gosh, look, your new stuffed animal. All right, Rufus, let's go back. Let's go get some more food. One more bite, one more bite. Oh yeah, open wide for that strawberry. That is some yummy, delicious stuff right there. Well guys, Rufus is going to continue his lunch. I'm gonna put him in his enclosure so he can finish his lunch. Now we're gonna go right now and we're gonna feed my rhino iguanas. Rufus is back in his enclosure. He's having a delicious meal and now it's time to feed the rhino iguanas. Now the rhino iguanas actually had lettuce yesterday and with most of the bigger reptiles, I feed them every other day because they can go, you know, every other day without food. I always overfeed just a little so they have some leftover. And as I look in here, they have got plenty of leftovers but since they got lettuce yesterday we're gonna give them bananas today this is their favorite treat we've got some nice freshly wrapped bananas we're gonna try to get in there without getting mauled but you guys can see there's already one coming at us we're gonna go in here now watch this guys we're just gonna come in here we're gonna slide this right through here she's gonna come and get it come on oh my gosh look at that she just took the whole banana okay bye 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 girl bye Come on. We've got Luna right here. She's just chowing down and we got thing number one. Now giving them the peelings on the bananas is actually pretty good for them. Hey guys, break up the fight. Take a banana. Dealing with these rhino iguanas in a food frenzy. I mean, always wear closed toed shoes. These guys will definitely come after you. Here, Dozer. Dozer right here, bull. Take that. Oh, Dozer, are you blind? Dozer right there, buddy. Dozer just took the banana. He's chowing down. Thing number one has had her banana. I mean, these rhino iguanas right here are absolutely amazing animals. And we're gonna go right over here to Luna. Luna is enjoying that delicious banana snack right there. Now, I don't feed bananas often just because they're very high in potassium. It's just an occasional treat. And I decided today, what better day to give them bananas on this wet, cool day. I'm gonna head on out of here, guys. It is absolutely insane in there. I mean, you can't even look down for one second. Like I was saying, these rhino iguanas are ferocious eaters. They'll come at you. If you got a banana in your hand, game over. And now that we fed all of the animals over at my property and here at my parents' house, that is going to end today's episode. I hope all of you did enjoy watching today's video. I had an absolute blast going around and showing all of you pretty much my daily routine here at the house between feeding all the animals, whether that be the parrots, the lemurs, the turtles, tortoises, and iguanas, and my dogs. I mean, I literally have a zoo. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and make sure to go comment down below what you thought of today's feeding video. Let me know if you wanna see more feeding videos because I really don't do them a whole lot often. And guys, if you're not subscribed already, you wanna see more animal feedings, you wanna see baby monkeys, otters, tigers, lions, and all kinds of crazy animals. Well, what are you waiting for? Go right now and hit that subscribe button and tap that little notification bell and you all will be notified whenever I post.